I was undertaking a long distance travel by road using public transportation. One of the vehicles delayed and I ended up late in the evening at a major city known for some nefarious activities and still far from my destination. I was in a hurry to get out of there and the vehicle that was next in line was a bus which would take longer to fill up. I didn't want to wait for that. I wanted a smaller vehicle, even though that would cost more, but it would fill up faster and leave sooner than later. When I was told that there was no smaller vehicle available, I left, went across the road to inquire about the fastest way out of there. While I was making inquiries, someone from the park I just left ran up to me to announce that a car just showed up and was ready to leave immediately. I went back with him, saw the car with a driver, a passenger in front and two passengers at the back, all male. The driver said, get in, let's go. I opened the back door to get in and smell this stench of death. It smelled like rotten corpse and I was thrown aback. But it was just in the moment because immediately that smell was gone and everything smelled normal. The passenger by the door that I opened, instead of sliding into the middle seat, got out and asked me to get in and sit in the middle. Since he came in before me, I would rather sit by the door. It felt weird. A thought crossed my mind not to get in, but I wondered what will these people think of me if I just bail. As I was getting into the car, I saw a vision of a corpse. It just flashed past my eyes and was gone as soon as it appeared. Now I was scared. I was in this car with four men on a long journey in darkness. Something was not right. Why was I worrying about what men who don't care about me will make of me changing my mind to not continue on that journey with them? As the man to my right entered and was about to close the door, I asked him to step out, please. He looked baffled. I asked again, can you step out, please? He looked dazed like the rest of the guys. But I looked at their faces one after the other and it suddenly dawned that I didn't want to be alone driving through the dark with this man. The guy by the door stepped out and I got out, told them I wasn't going anymore and stepped away. Immediately, the four men were enraged. What do you mean you are not going anymore? Didn't you say you were in a hurry and we've been waiting for you? You, you can't just get out and say you are not going anymore. Really? The more they voiced their displeasure, the more I was convinced that it was all a setup. So I walked to where a good number of passengers were waiting. The four angry men got back into the car and sped off in rage. As I watched them go, one after the other, the people around came to me and said, go and thank your God you would have been a dead person by this time tomorrow. What? They all knew. They all watched me get into that car and said nothing. How could you not have warned me, I asked. It's not our business. Everybody minds their business here, they said. I was shaking from head to toe. I couldn't get out of that place fast enough. Someone helped me to where I could get the right vehicle. And even after I boarded one, I was watching everyone inside with suspicion to see if there was any silent communication among them. This is one case where I know that God was determined to save me by every means he could employ. The smell of death, the vision of death, still the final decision to continue on that ride or not was mine to make. God will always do his part, but we must be willing to take what we have been given and run with it to escape what God is trying to save us from. It is easy to bear with people who don't know about the danger associated with where they are loitering. But what do you say to a man who is fully aware and yet lingers in a place he should be rather desperate to vacate? In the story from Genesis 19, the angels gave lot details of their assignment that Sodom and Gomorrah was done with. The only reason why it wasn't yet in rubbles and ashes was because of Lot and his family. 
The angels wanted them out and safe before they commenced the destruction of a city doomed by its own evil deeds. But instead of the horrid exit you would expect, Lot and his family were lingering. Bad as the city was, they didn't want to leave. Evil as the actions of their neighbors were, they didn't want to leave them. It is hard to just pack up and go to nobody knows where. It is hard to leave everything you work so hard for, to commence a journey to nowhere in particular. The losses of the present, the uncertainties of the unknown, make it hard to be grateful, even while knowing that God was doing you a favor by sparing your life and that of your family. Move is always hard, even when it is well planned and executed. How much more when you have to take off your roots in a second and disappear to nobody knows where? It was very difficult for Lot and his family, so hard that the angels had to put their feet down and get them going. Leave those who have chosen not to believe God or your story alone. Let those who are laughing at the absurdity of the impending destruction be. Lot, you are nobody's savior. You can't even save yourself. That's why we are here, to save you and your family. Can you please help us to help you? Get yourself, your wife and two daughters out of here as fast as you can. Still, they didn't get it. They were still taking their time, hoping one or more of their sons-in-law, friends and neighbors will come along, wondering how they will leave all their life savings and just go, wondering which is better, to die with all you have or to leave with none of them. They were dragging their feet, despite the angels' attempts to get them to hurry. So much so the two angels had to take them by the hand and get them going out of there. The angels were on assignment and it not only had to be done, it must be done right and timely. Get your journal please. Look around you. Where are you lingering? What are you lingering on? Who are you lingering around? Who are you lingering about with? And why are you lingering? Sometimes, some people are caught in the destruction that was meant for others because they were lingering in the wrong place at the wrong time. Even after God had warned them severally, like the fly that follows the corpse to the grave, refusal to listen and to heed instructions have sentenced some to untimely grave. But for the mercies of God, but for the mercies of God, some of us will not be here today because we have played with fire and danced with danger. Sometimes unaware and some others fully aware and just careless. But for the mercies of God, Lot and his family would have been taken along in that city-wide destruction. But because the mercy of God toward him was so great and also because of his connection to Abraham, the angels restrained themselves as they constrained Lot and his family to leave danger behind and escape to safety. God was compelling them to get saved. All the mercies and the love of our God. Get your journal again, please. Can you look back on your journey so far and recall where the mercies of God have shown up and saved you from what could have taken you down or out? How did it feel when you eventually realized what you have been saved from? Scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. Just like disobedience has cost the lives of many, despite God's moves to spare them, our obedience can be a lifesaver also, not only for our lives, but that of others connected to us. How can you work on your obedience to God? I want to live sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. I want to live obedient to God's directives because you never know the one that makes and mars the deal. We just don't know. And sometimes we don't realize until it is too late how our response affects us and those around us. It is not enough to say we love God. The Bible says if you know these things, blessed are you 
if you do them. Those who are willing and obedient are saved from what takes out others and they leave to enjoy the good of the land. In fact, his word says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Jesus said, you are my friends if you obey me. In Deuteronomy it says, you shall walk in all the way the Lord your God has commanded you that you may live and that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land that you shall possess. In Psalms 119.60, David said, I hasten and do not delay to keep your commandments. John stated that whoever keeps his commandments abides in God and God in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. Unlike the angels that were sent in Lot's case, God has given us his ever-present spirit to guide us away from evil into all truth. May we honor the presence of the Holy Spirit with our obedience. May our obedience not be lax, warm, or cold. May it be hot and timely because delayed obedience can be dangerous. Doing God's will in our way and at our time may be tantamount to not doing it at all. May we be a people who are known for doing God's will in his way and in his time. Amen. Don't forget to subscribe and share this with family and friends. Be inspired. You are a star and it's your time to shine.